Hi, Stephen from Mona Disown. Well, I bought the new Omen 15 with the 4800H from Ryzen, and it's got the 1660 Ti in it. And of course, as you may well know, I've been using the previous generation uh, Omen 15T for about a year now, so I'm in a good position to be able to tell you, you know, which one I prefer, the pros and cons are of each. Uh, now, this is the sixth Ryzen laptop I've had to buy, gaming laptop, costing me a total of $7,000 out of my own money. So I really would appreciate it. If you find this video useful, you know, subscribe because it does help support my channel. So let's find out what it's like. My unit costs $1,350 and that gets you the uh, Ryzen 7 4800H and the 1660 Ti with 16 gigabytes of dual channel plus the 144 hertz IPS panel, which has free sync. Now for $950, you can get the six core 4600H and the 1650 Ti. And for the Intel models, you get the six core 10300H uh, CPU plus the GTX 1650. Um, but of course the Intel models do go up to a RTX 2070 uh, Max-Q Super in this new design. Now, if you want to go even higher than that and get an eight core CPU, you still, I believe, have to stick to the older design. So let's take a look at the uh, insides of the, the original Omen 15T from uh, 2019, new Omen 15 here from, of course, 2020. You know, aluminum back covers, both have larger air intakes. In fact, it's, I'd say it is slightly larger here on the new Omen 15, which goes towards helping to save a bit of weight. And indeed, the back cover it does feel a bit more lightweight as well. Now you've got ones inside, you've had a 69 watt hour battery, which was its Achilles heel, because it always ran off the dedicated GPU as well in the original 15T, and you know, two and a half hours of battery life. While it's here on the, on the new Omen 15, of course we've got FreeSync, uh, works really well, Optimus with the uh, the, the 1660 Ti, and this 70 watt hour battery lasted me seven seven hours twenty five minutes at forty percent brightness streaming YouTube. So that's a great improvement, I must admit. Um, now, one other noticeable uh, difference: hard drive, two and a half inch bay. Done away with that here. We've got two M.2 slots, and uh, got a nice copper plate here to help keep it cool with a thermal pad. So that's pretty good. Again, that saves weight. You also notice that the speakers have been moved forward, more towards the, uh, the end user. Uh, of course, we've got two uh, sticks of RAM, which is great, nice and easy accessible. Wi-Fi card though, this is the AX200, but part of it is underneath a heat pipe, and that's gonna make that a little bit more awkward to replace. Cooling looks pretty similar. You know, three heat sinks as previous. Nice big thick uh, heat pipes and big fans. So that's pretty uh, pretty comparable. And indeed, the fans seem to do a good job in keeping the chassis cool, with the warmest part of the keyboard being only 34 degrees. Now no cool air is brought in through the keyboard itself, but there is an air intake above the keyboard. Underneath, it is pretty cool as well. And the fans do move quite a bit of air, especially with the Max fan. HP gives you three power modes, with comfort, default and performance, as well as giving you the option to max out the fan. I would have liked to have finally seen a keyboard shortcut to activate this rather than having to go into the software, but as you will see, max fan is not needed. Here is some footage of Far Cry 5, and at the top is performance with auto fan, in the middle is performance with the max fan, and at the bottom is the default profile with auto fan. Performance with the auto fan sees the CPU hit 81 degrees and the GPU at 65, which is perfectly fine. Switching to the max fan, this brings the CPU down to 73 degrees and the GPU to 58, so it really is very effective. Switching to default and auto fan sees the CPU at 76 degrees and the 1660 Ti at 61. So it is a very good middle ground option and frame rates are still good. In all of my testing, I use performance and auto fan, so you can see the worst case thermal performance. Even maxing out the settings and enabling ray tracing in Call of Duty Warzone, I was getting about 86 FPS and the CPU temperature was about 80 degrees. In Far Cry 5, the average frame rates are comparable to the ASUS Tough A15, but the minimums definitely favour the Omen 15, which suggests that the 4800H on the Omen is faster than that on the Tough A15. Now I will be doing a separate video comparing these two systems, but here is a taster on how the Omen has done such a good job. 
in Cinebench R20, the Omen even beats out the Mech 15 G3 with its super boosted CPU and that was 5% faster than the tough A15. In my handbraking code, it produced the fastest time yet, beating the tough A15 by 9%. Now Max fan does get rather loud at 55 decibels, and even the auto fan using performance mode is quite loud at 51 decibels. So, that, so using the default profile at 48 decibels provides a really nice gaming experience. So not only have the bottom panels changed, but the lids have too. Now we've got a new Omen 15. It's actually a more square shape, or rectangle shape I should say. Whilst here, of course, we had this hinge system here, which is a central hinge, which there's always a bone of contention for people to a more traditional design of having the hinges here. And I do prefer the new style for sure. And of course, the pattern has changed as well. Now, Omen often had like an X pattern here. And it was more subtle, certainly on a 2019 model. But they've done away with that altogether here. It's a nice anodized grey look with a very nice blue Omen symbol here. But just a, just a square with a reflective blue uh, logo there. So that's nice with the Omen written underneath it. And I do prefer the look of this. And as for the power bricks, I mean, using the same 200 watt power brick, actually, you might have just standardized power bricks. Of course, this is powering the uh, i9 and the 2080 Max Q, so it's more than sufficient for the 1660 Ti. All right, so let's compare the keyboards and the keyboard deck. 2019 model, brushed aluminium, doesn't show as many smudges as, say, the, you know, the anodized model here on the 2020. Uh, also, you have the Omen 15 etched on here, whilst it's omen there. Now a big difference of course is the touchpad. And of course, separate mouse buttons here, which I do tend to prefer and integrated here. Now on the 2020, it's slightly larger and uh, this is actually using a Synaptics touchpad compared to Elan and they both work pretty good though, to be fair. Other big difference, separate number pad on the 2019 model. If you want to use one of those, you still need to get this design. Now on the 2020, they do have some, some of the same functionality, but of course there's no number keys, but you do have a dedicated uh, calculator button, which I do like. And if you're a big user of the arrow keys, you know, they're more separate and larger. So that is good as well. Now, one, one thing I don't like so much is the power button, you know, is embedded into the rest of the keys. So it doesn't stand out as much compared to a separate power button here. And again, there's no fingerprint reader or Windows Hello IR camera. So that, is a shame. I wish they did include that. You do have an airplane mode button here on the, the 2019 model. Nothing uh, on here. But other than that, they're pretty much the same. Now, one thing I would like to point out, the old model has rounded corners. So, you know, not sharp, but pointed corners throughout here on the new model. And that is quite sharp, as is the edge here. This is more rounded here is pretty sharp. So you know, some may find that it cuts into their wrists a bit more. The four zone RGB keyboard can be configured using the Omen control center, giving you the basic controls such as changing the color and brightness of each zone. So looking at the ports here on the left hand side, with the uh, original 15T from 2019 at the bottom and the new one on the top, they continue having the, uh, the power cable at the back, which is fine on the left, so that's not too bad, keeps it out of the way. We, again, we have the uh, Ethernet per port here. Now, the HDMI port is a bit more further towards the center compared to the uh, towards the back here. Now, you've only got the one USB Type A port here on the left compared to two on the original uh, Omen here. And of course, you've got a Display Port and a Thunderbolt 3 port here on the uh, the original Omen here. Now, of course, the Intel ones on the new design will also have a Thunderbolt 3 port. Now, the SD card reader has been moved to the left hand side from the right here on, on the new one. And of course, you still got the combo headphone mic jack. Now you will notice there's quite a bit of a gap here compared to the previous one. Now, time will tell to see if any dust will fall in there, you know, or get trapped when it's in your bag. So on the right hand side, we have the USB-C port, which is a power delivery out so you can charge things, but you cannot charge a laptop with it. You have a, a mini display port. So that's been moved from the left to the right. Uh, of course, the air vent and two USB type A ports. So I wanted to show you the, the back, although there's no actual ports, of course, but having the hinge system on the new model does allow, you know, some ventilation even in the center. Now the front of the new laptop is very smooth. Now normally you'd often have a ridge here or a lip, 
but really there isn't one here even on the previous model you could uh, quite easily open it with one hand now here you've got to get your thing fingernail in the gap and be able to open it but once you do you can open it with one hand so even though last year's model and this year's model both use 144 hertz panels they're different manufacturers on the left we have where uh, the auo from the 2019 and on the right we have an lg panel now the color gamut is pretty similar we're looking at 94 percent of uh, srgb and about 70 percent of adobe rgb now the brightness the newer panel is not quite as bright that's at 316 nits versus 330 nits on the previous panel and uh, 650 to 1 on the lg panel versus uh, about uh, 890 to 1 on the previous auo panel but still both are pretty good and i like them now the new hinge design does allow the panel to go all the way back and lay flat now so the backlight bead it's perfect don't see any at all the new omen with the 144 hertz free sync panel does really well in my ghosting test and this is a refreshing change from some of the subpar panels we have seen to date on these ryzen laptops i would even say it was better than on the previous model the bang and the loosened speakers fired down at the front and the speakers you know they're okay they're about average really good enough to watch movies and even play games with now one nifty option is the noise cancellation on the internal microphone if you are into music production i am pleased to say that the omen 15 passed my latency mon test and again this may just be the ryzen system because so far all the ryzen laptops have passed whilst the intel ones don't seem to do so well here's a 720p webcam I think it looks fairly decent, it looks fairly sharp, the colours are fairly good. Of course you've got the noise cancelling uh, microphone as well here. So let's ramp up the Max fan. I think you'll find that it does a good job of cutting out the ambient noise. The fan is ramping up pretty loud now. No, what do you think? So the weight of the new model. £4.11. The 2019 model. Five pounds seven ounces. Battlefield 5 DX11 Ultra settings. The CPU does spike up to 87 degrees using performance mode in the auto fan, but on average it stays around about 80 degrees, and this is pulling about 36 watts and holding a really good boost clock of over 4000 megahertz. Now, the Dell G5 Special Edition had to throttle down to about 2500 megahertz to achieve this performance. Compared to the Tough A15, the frame rates were pretty similar but we do see some improvements as we lower quality settings and again, a better minimum frame rate. I also show the 1% lows, which are decent. So how would I sum up the 2020 Omen 15? Well, HP did a fantastic job with the Ryzen model. Most 4800H laptops so far tend to run in the 90s and in the case of the Dell G5 Special Edition, hitting 100 degrees. So it is refreshing to see thermals in the 70s and 80s, whilst also maintaining a high CPU boost clock. Frame rates are comparable to other laptops with the same hardware, although the Omen does seem to do very well as your lower quality settings, and perhaps more importantly, better 1% lows, as that affects your gaming experience more. The Autofan does a good job, and in my experience with their Intel systems, they do a good job of managing the power, so I expect a good performance on those models as well. HP has done a good job of making the Omen 15 footprint smaller and lighter, and they didn't skimp on the screen like other OEMs have done. In my opinion, the biggest improvement over the previous generation is that now we get good battery life and no screen tearing via the FreeSync. Now, G-Sync was good, but the poor battery life on the 2019 model was always its Achilles heel. Now, all we need now is a Ryzen model with a higher than an RTX 2060. If you found my video useful, consider subscribing. I have many more units to review and have quite a few comparison smackdowns planned. Thanks for watching. Bye now.